Minis forums, you probably know them for their mini PCs that I cover in my channel, right? Well, they've sent this out to me, which is their first tablet. It's a Windows 11 Pro tablet, and they call it a three-in-one because it has the tablet form, laptop form with the keyboard attached, as I'm showing you now. But if you power it off, you can plug into its additional Type-C port that it has here on the left, a video input and it will turn into a portable monitor. So that's why they call it a three in one. Now this model here is powered by a Ryzen 7. It's the 8000 series, the 8840U up to 28 watts. It's got 32 gigabytes of LPDDR6 RAM that's running at 6400 mega transfers, one terabyte SSD, 50 watt hour battery, and the screen, which is an anti-glare matte screen, it's got a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's 14 inches, so it's a nice large screen, fully laminated, supports this, an active stylus, up to 4096 pressure sensitive levels. And I'll be running through this model here in a first look at what you can expect out of Mini's Forum's first tablet, the V3. Here's what Mini Forums includes. We've got a user manual here, a little bit of paperwork. There is our power supply, very small. Supports power delivery up to 65 watts. And this is the Type-C to Type-C cable. Looking at the weight now of our V3, so just the tablet is 926 grams, but of course you're gonna need the keyboard and then the stand for that. And that is gonna push our weight up then to 1.6 kilos almost, so it's getting a little heavy, but it is 14 inches. Bezels with our V3, they're not too bad, slightly thicker at the bottom here. Now we have a fully laminated screen up to 500 nits. It's an anti-glare panel, it is IPS, so you'll notice at the edges there is a little bit of a, what I call like a shadow coming in here into play, and I do see a little bit of light leakage, but it's very minimal, just at the top, and only when I have a pure black image, yeah, otherwise you're not gonna really notice that at all. So the screen, very good. Touch response has been excellent. I have no problems with it at all. I've noticed that the accuracy is good. And of course you can use the stylus with it. Now with the screen here, it does have a good resolution and the refresh rate even better. So 165 hertz is the refresh if you've got it in the performance mode. And well, the resolution 2560 by 1600. So it's nice and sharp, I can't see pixels. And then turning it into like a little laptop now with its type cover style keyboard, it's a little different the kickstand on this model here on the V3. Normally you would pull the bottom up to act as the stand, but because we have the two vents there, we don't want to be blocking those when we're using it. So you have to pull it from the top and it's a little stiff and that goes all the way down and this way, well it's about as far as it will go, this way those vents there are open and then with the pogo pin connectors, that is going to, there we go, locked into place. And you can now see that the backlit keyboard is on and we are set there. So the package itself is looking, I think it looks a little dated compared to some of the other two-in-one tablets that are out there, especially the keyboard. It's almost like a, a retro style to me from what I used to review about, well, a good five, four years ago. It's functional, still a little bulky, and as I showed you with the weights there, adds a bit of weight to the whole package, and then when you get yourself set up to move to another desk or put it in your bag, it's very easy just to fold it down and then of course slot that into a bag. First impressions of the touchpad are good, that finer movements, the cursor's not skipping around everywhere. It's one, not one of those really annoying touchpads. The surface feels nice and smooth, and even though it is a little shorter than what we typically see now with a lot of Ultrabooks and laptops that have huge touch pads, it's still functional, it still works well. I can still swap over between all the tabs, do what I need to. I don't feel like I need to reach now to plug in or add a Bluetooth mouse or anything. No, it is good. I do like what I'm seeing with this touch pad, left and right, and you can just hear those clicks with the left and right mouse button. So it's working well supports gestures too. And then typing on this keyboard as well is good. I have no problems with it. Got about 1.4 millimeters or so of travel there and it is backlit as you can see now. So it's bright enough that it's gonna be great for some low lit environments where you may be working, say an aircraft cabin. 
Right hand side we have two USB 4 ports, these are 40 gigabits per second, fingerprint reader, power button, status LED, so on, it's just a continue LED there when it's charging, it is flashing, we have our speakers too, either side you can see the other ones right here. Now this Type-C port is for our V-Link and that stands for our video link, so this is the video in, so it can turn it into a monitor mode. And I've never seen this before on a Windows tablet. So I've never seen a full-size SD card reader, which is really good to have this here, considering the power it has, I'm all for this. And you see the SD cards, when you do insert those, that they are gonna be sticking out just a, a little bit there, all right? That's how they're gonna be. Stick out a bit, so you shouldn't be able to damage it like that, but just so you're aware it doesn't go right all the way in. It would've been nice if it did. Click right in, but hey, still for that. Our volume up and down, and yes, a 3.5 millimeter headphone out with mic support. Very quickly, the BIOS, I wanted to show you a couple of things here. So the RAM speed cannot be changed. You can't set it from 6400 to 7500, unfortunately. If you go into the advanced menu where I am now, go under AMD CBS, they do let us change a few things. So it's not the full advanced settings we get inside the BIOS, but some bits and pieces here. So under MBI, O common options, this is probably the setting that most people will be changing graphics configuration. So they've dedicated only two gigabytes to the 780M, but you can increase that up to 16. Now I don't recommend 16. In my experience, that is relatively unstable. I would go eight gigabytes maximum if you wanted to help just boost up gaming performance. And getting out of this, there is another setting in, in here that we can go to, which is our SMU common options. And this is the system configuration. It's referring to our power limit, so the TDP. Now I keep it on auto, so you can set that to 28 watts max. In my experience with the unit, now testing it out a few days, 28 watts is really your limit because you go up to 90 degrees Celsius. Anything over that, you're gonna start to thermal throttle, but you can set it all the way up to 54 watts. Again, not recommended. So that's the only real settings that we can change that are useful. I wouldn't mess about with anything else. Of course, you do have uh, your secure boot you can disable, your boot order to as well if you wanted to boot from a USB pen drive. Performance is good. We've got that 32 gigabytes of RAM and it is running at 64 mega transfers, 6400, sorry, mega transfers. So it is really quick. Everything seems to pop in good. There's no start menu lag and touch response is good as I pointed out there with the screen. So one terabyte drive and this drive is not particularly quick for PCIe 4.0 speeds. It's only just over 4,000 when it comes to the reads, 4,600 and writes getting near 4,000. There are drives that can do 7,000 here. If you're gonna get something like a Samsung 980 Pro, uh, upgradability on this I think will be a little bit complicated. I'm not going there with this tablet. Sadly, there's no just easy access hatch on the rear of it. Random reads and writes are good, however, for the drive and everything, it is good, fast, okay? It feels like a very quick tablet here. Now, bringing up and playing anything that is demanding, this is a Jellyfish test file here, 140 megabits per second, 4K, 10-bit, and you see that it loads in quick. I am on the battery battery here at the moment, and skipping the head, not a problem for it. That playback is smooth. It is not dropping any frames at all. And then a file such as this one here from Sony, this is, just mute those speakers. This is very quick, runs at 60 frames per second. Again, there are no drop frames, skip ahead. This is what I've come to expect here from that Radeon 780M2, which of course is the integrated graphics. So good performance there from that. Now the synthetic benchmarks that I have run, these were run before the Windows update thing popped up, okay? And I did run them with it plugged in for maximum performance using here that performance profile when it was plugged in at the full 28 watts. So you can see with Cinebench, this is the 2024 version, we get 100 points for the single core score and 759 for the multi-core score. Now this is something you can freely download, run this on your own tablet or PC to compare that performance, see how much of a upgrade in performance you're gonna be getting there. And the other one was a Geekbench, this is the version six of it. And I get 2400 with a single core score and just over 10,000 for multi, which is great. So this shows that it is a, it's a very quick, it's a powerful tablet here that Minis Forum do have. And being their first, I think they've done 
an excellent job with it so far. So this here is the dashboard, their own software that you got a glimpse of just before. So when you go into that, you can get device monitoring, system detection, it's telling me danger here. Uh, that's because I need to run a scan with the virus according to this. Account security, I'm not when, when using a Windows account at the moment, so that's another reason why that has popped up. But there is no uh, spyware on this that I've been able to detect or anything like that. I don't see any dodgy software, which some of the mini PC manufacturers did have. Uh, luckily for us, Minis Forum have never had that issue. It's been um, Ace Magic or one of those similar kind of brands that did have some concerning things, but not with this model. Uh, you see the RAM usage and everything there. Device Manager, you can take a look at different things in there too. Of the V3 and a Windows Upgrade and Power Premium. I don't know why they call it that power premium. That's the refresh rate it's swapping over. So you get up to the 165 in the performance mode. This is the power save mode, just 15 watts. And this right here is the balanced mode, which is 18 watt TDP there. And those last two modes, they all use the 60 hertz refresh rate just to help with that battery life. And it's telling me that uh, it doesn't want to be in the performance mode here because it needs to be powered on and the battery level needs to be at least 20% because I don't have the power plugged in at the moment. But all the benchmarks I did run, as I mentioned, were with that power mode. So it's a powerful, potent here tablet we've got from Minis Forum. Of course, with Windows, we get an on-screen keyboard, and it is fine to use, but I always prefer having an actual physical hardware keyboard, so much better. But just to show you that it does work well. Now the stylus, it's got the 4096 pressure sensitive levels. It seems to be instantaneous, very quick. There is really no lag whatsoever. Palm rejection is there. Uh, hover feature, so from about, that's two, three centimeters. Now about uh, approximately a centimeter and a half is where it does work. And you can see I've got that. A uh, little cross on the screen there where the stylus is. Now the accuracy of it is very good. It's right where the nib is. Exactly. So that is good to see. And the stylus, does it work right up to the edge of the screen? It certainly does. You can see it's right there, right on the edge. Every time I seem to use that, it seems to work wherever I am on the screen. Although, okay, there, you know, all good. Okay, so that is working fine. And a quick little handwriting test here. Hello. Whoops. World. Messy handwriting, but Good, and of course we've got the sensor on board, gyro, auto rotation, all of that is working. This is just a preview of what you can expect out of the stylus. It does seem to be very accurate, very fast, and a lot of people are probably gonna be after that, and that's how it sits again on the screen there, on the top there, magnetically. The Minis 4 MV3 has four built-in speakers either side, good stereo separation, a little bit of bass, not a lot, as you can expect from a thin, well, relatively thin, Windows tablet. The sample I'll give you now is at 100% volume, and you can hear that it's good, it's loud enough, and they're nothing amazing, but they're not disappointing either. It's what I've really come to expect from this style of two-in-one tablet, although they call this a three-in-one. I think the speakers are fine, adequate. I would rate them out of 10 as about like a six out of 10, but here's a sample now at that 100% volume, so you can get an idea of what they do sound like. Brief look at gaming performance. This is the Witcher 3, which keeps crashing on me. And for some reason, it's gonna do it again. It's just not gonna work. It's gonna cause the whole system here to reboot. So something's going on. I looked at the thermals, they seem to be fine, but it's hard for me to actually get a log of that because it keeps resetting itself once I try to play uh, any games. So not a good sign at all. And this is from trying to play from external storage, from internal storage. And it is the performance mode I am testing it out in, which is supposed to be that 28 watts. So this is now the third time it has done this, trying to test games, and it would just reboot on me. Unacceptable. And a game that does work is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now I have it set to the low preset, and the Radon 780M is handling this just fine, giving me 40 frames per second at 800p. So this is working all right. At least this game does want to work, and so far testing it out, I have not seen any reboots at all playing this game. It just seems to be The Witcher, for some reason, that will not run 
and cause us some random reboot error with the V3 tablet here. And the last synthetic benchmark I wanted to show you just with this brief hands on is Time Spy. So I expected this to be a little better. What I can get out of many PCs that have a similar kind of chipset, which would be the 7840HS can do around, well, 2800 here for the graphics score and 3000 points. This is a little under that with the 8840U. Now I did set it with the, of course, high performance mode. That is the 28 watts for our TDP and this is the result. This is the second time I did run it, and that's just what it is. But for a tablet, it is still very powerful, good performance right there, so that's great. As for the thermals and fan noise, well, you are going to hear it a little bit, especially when it's plugged in, okay? You'll hear the fan, and when it's under load, it's not too bad, that fan noise. It's not as loud as their mini PCs. I don't find it personally too offensive. They've got the four copper transfer pipes in there, then the two fans right there that I showed you when we looked at the, the back of the device. And 90 degrees Celsius is the hottest it did get up to, running all these stress tests, benchmarks, and all of that. So not bad. Thermals are okay. It didn't trigger thermal throttling. I mean, it's getting a little hot, but it's still, well, reasonable there. And it pulled here 21 watts. For some reason, I don't seem to be able to get that 28 watts that this is capable of in, again, that high performance mode that I did have selected. And it was plugged in when I ran all those benchmarks. And using our Minis Forum V3 here as a secondary display, as a monitor, is possible. You just got to power it off, plug something in that supports it. So right here, I've just plugged in a Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's using their desktop mode, and oh, that's probably my cable. Seems a little touchy there. What I've noticed is that this is a little disappointing, is there's no touch support. Now, I thought this would work because I have a portable monitor that I can plug in with this phone and I get the touch support. So this is a bit of a letdown here that it doesn't seem to support that. What it is supporting though, at least Samsung is, is the keyboard that does seem to be working. Okay, so I can bring things up on there. And as you can see, I'm using our touchpad with the keyboard. Okay, so the touchpad does work. I can launch things from here. I can jump into uh, gallery right now. Take a look at that load up some of my images and whatnot. So that is all working and you can plug in a Nintendo Switch, anything really, anything that is gonna support Type-C video in. You can also get adapters and whatnot for that. So it's a good option to have in a nice little extra with the V3 three-in-one tablet. Now, if you did want to run Linux, I managed to get it running. This is Manjaro with open source drivers and the touch is working. Now, you saw that flickering just happening before. I don't know why it's doing that. It's something to do with the graphics drivers, I believe, why it's doing that flicker. Bluetooth's working, wireless is working, and the keyboard and everything else does seem to work. And audio too, so that's good. It looks like it'll be able to run Linux, no problem. So my first impressions are as follows here. For their first attempt at a tablet, they've done an excellent job. I do like the screen. I think that's the best part of it. It's fantastic. It's really bright, even brighter than their claim. It's 523 nits, according to my Spider X that I've used to measure the screen. And it's got great color gamut, the coverage that this screen can deliver as well, the IPS panel. It's fully laminated, the anti-glare coating is one of the best parts about it, so you don't get all that horrible, terrible, annoying glare. Touch is very good, the response, the accuracy, the stylus does seem very accurate. We have those pressure sensitive levels. And then the performance, as I pointed out, is good for a tablet. However, I sometimes have problems getting into that higher power mode. It will sometimes run like some of the benchmarks that I showed you like times by it at 17 watts instead of 28 watts. In the game, The Witcher was crashing, just wouldn't run for me. Now, I don't know whether that's to do with Mini's forum or I think it's probably the AMD drivers, maybe with this chipset being relatively new. Although the Radeon 780M graphics isn't new, so it shouldn't really be happening there, but it is and I wanted to report on that with you. Now, battery life, so far in my testing, I've only been using this for a day, that you're looking around about at least eight hours, and that's with the brightness set to 30% using the power saving mode at 15 watts, and it still performs reasonably well for general kind of tasks at that kind of wattage, but if you want the best performance, you wanna put it into the high powered mode, and you will hear those fans. Now, in battery mode, like right now, just idle, no. Oh, tiny little bit of fan noise, so they're very low RPM. When it ramps up, 
What does it sound like? Well, it's pretty much like an Ultrabook, is exactly what this really sounds like with the dual fans, like a thin Ultrabook, really similar kind of sound from there. Is it annoying? Well, you hear it, I wish it was passive, sorry, yeah, passively cool would have been great, but with that kind of power, of course, it does need to be actively cooled there. Speakers do sound good. There's a couple of little niggly little things that uh, I've noticed that sometimes when you go to connect up the keyboard, that it doesn't, there we go, then it connects in properly and you, sometimes it doesn't work straight away, you have to have a second attempt at it. It's only a very minor thing. The kickstand is kind of unusual how you have to pull the top down and at first I wanted to pull the bottom up, which you can do, but then the magnet doesn't really hold it that well and I realized that it can't be the top that you use as the base for the kickstand because it would block the intake there, of course, for those two fans. So that is the most upright angle is there, okay, and then you can put it all the way back. Any further than that, when you start to press on the screen, it will drop down if you press really hard, if you're gonna be using the stylus, of course. This is the thing that it can easily pop off the kickstand for it, which is a minor annoyance. I really wish that Mini's forum had put stronger magnets in that. It's just me being a little bit of nitpicking there. The other is the look of the machine. I know you can't judge a book by its cover. It's a powerful Windows 11 Pro laptop, uh, but the bezels, you know, they make it look like a five-year-old machine. The style of the keyboard looks a little similar to those tech last tablets that I was reviewing like five or six years ago. It has that bit of a, a, almost like a retro kind of look to it. I wish it looked a little bit more modern, but touchpad, good keyboard, good back clip. It really is a good package here, but I don't believe it's going to be cheap. I don't know the exact pricing because when I look on their website, it's not showing yet, but I believe, and don't quote me on this figure, that it is going to be well over, I think, uh, 1300 US dollars for this. I don't know what they're gonna sell in terms of storage configurations or whether they will go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. They probably might just stay at 32. I think for most users, that's ideal, that's fine. But if you want a Windows 11 laptop with a matte display, high-res display, high refresh rate, also can double as a secondary monitor, and you want AMD, well, this is it. This is really all we have. We're not getting a lot of Windows 11 tablets anymore, are we? And it's good to see that Mini's forums now jumping into this area as well, along with their mini PCs, their motherboards, and hopefully more products from them there. So that, for a first look here, is all I'm gonna cover in this video. There may be a follow-up video later on, but very promising here from Mini's forum. If they price it right, they can just work on some of those minor little things, then I think it could be a very good Windows 11 tablet. Thanks a lot for watching this video.